thank you so much for blessing us with the biggest blessing that you have given us, Jesus Christ, who became one of us to redeem us and to bless us with his life. Grant us eye salvation that we may see you this morning and through your word throughout the series on the Beatitudes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we are going to be uh, looking uh, today at the scandalous, remember that word, scandalous blessings of Makarios. Why is it scandalous will be the question that will take our time today. Why are the Beatitudes scandalous? So keep that question in the back of your mind as uh, we go through the study. And then um, the word makarios, the meaning of this word that in our English Bibles is either translated blessed or happy. Okay? And both words in the English fall short of expressing the huge <clears throat> meaning of um, makarios in the Greek, because as you will see, it is a tremendously huge meaning that we have in, in the Greek. But why are they scandalous? Okay? Now the next question that concerns us is this. Are the Beatitudes a new set of laws that Jesus laid down? Or are they words of grace? In other words, are they law or are they gospel? To put it in Luther's terms as to how he liked to view scripture. Said scripture is either contains either law or contains gospel, and don't confuse the two. <clears throat> Many years ago, I attended a conference that had as the speaker a very famous New Testament scholar, renowned in the in all denominations and many denominations. Christian denominations for his scholarship. When I mention his name, you probably will um, remember seeing the name somewhere or it will ring a bell. F. F. Bruce. B. R. U. C. E. But don't ask me what the F stands for. <laughs> F. F. Bruce. And I remember sitting there in the hall, listening to this great New Testament scholar. In fact, he is the editor of one of the translations of the New Testament. Um, not actually a translation of the putting together of the many fragments of New Testament um, texts into one consistent whole. Because that's another story, and someday, if you like, I can talk to you about that. <clears throat> that our New Testament, as well as the Old Testament, is a compilation of many different pieces of manuscripts that have been found along the uh, Christian era by researchers and scholars. So F.F. F. Bruce says, uh, when talking about the Beatitudes, because that was his topic that day, he said, in the Beatitudes, we have Jesus as the new Moses going up into a different mountain, and there he gives his new law. And the new law 
is found in uh, either the eight Beatitudes of Matthew or the four Beatitudes that are found in Luke. <clears throat> so you tell me after we're done today, was F.F. F. Bruce correct? Okay. Um, are the Beatitudes law or are they gospel? Are they new requirements of a new law that we are to keep in order for us to be saved or are they words of grace? Okay? So, <clears throat> with that in mind, um, let's Let's go to first Matthew. Not, not second man. Second Matthew. <laughs> Thank you for that. I will take it as a beatitude. <laughs> now here is where F. F. Bruce uh, was piggybacking on. Okay, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. Now, as you can tell, my acid reflux is playing all kinds of tricks <clears throat> with my stomach and my throat and all of that. So I'm going to um, need some help in, in reading this, or we may all just read it together. Blessed are the poor. Right, come on, everybody. Blessed are the poor in spirit. There's the kingdom of heaven. There's the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and also say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad. Because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Okay? I'm not going to ask you what was the last time you read the Beatitudes out loud. Because I would include myself in the question and uh, I would be embarrassed myself. Okay? But here they are also from the beginning found in Luke 6. He went down with them and stood on a level place. <clears throat> a large crowd of his disciples was there and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon. Now he went down with them it gives the picture that he had been up high on a mountain. And so he goes down, perhaps, to a plateau on the mountain, and a large crowd of his disciples, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and now notice this from the coastal region around time. <clears throat> what is unusual about including Tyre and Sidon. <clears throat> yes. These were the Gentiles. Okay, so it's a mixed crowd who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, those troubled by impure spirits. Welcome, welcome were cured and the people all tried to touch him 
because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, okay, let's say the same thing, let's repeat it in unison. Blessed are you who are born. Yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leave for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how they are to the But woe to you who are rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get to the woes at the end. Well, though. Yes. If, could you get rid of what's on number 10 there so we can see it? If you're set that done. Here we go. Here or in Luke? That, that, that's not what the previous screen had. Okay, let's go to the previous screen. Luke. Because, look at verse 22. Because of the Son of Man, I would suggest that there are not eight, but nine Beatitudes. Hmm. Okay. It says before that, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now before that, the eighth beatitude, blessed are those who persecute for righteousness sake, purchase you, persecute you for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Number eight is saying that you're persecuted because you're seeking righteousness. The next one is saying that you are persecuted for my sake. Is that a ninth beatitude or am I misreading something? From the point of view that he is our righteousness, it might it could be combined. It could be combined. It could be combined. Thank you. Very good question. Now, <clears throat> we come back here to our uh, meaning of the word akarios. <clears throat> the first part, the it's M-A-K. It's the Greek word from which our word macro is taken. Can anybody think of an English word that has macro at the beginning? Macroeconomics mean? Worldwide, global. It's the big, the big picture. Okay. Anything that has macro at the beginning means that it's large. It is huge. Okay. It, it is not. It, it is abnormally big, huge. Okay. And so, uh, I have this computer here. What is it? The creators of these things weren't dumb. Of course they weren't. But they knew what names to give things. So this is a Mac. It is a big thing. It can do large things. So 
uh, makarios means that wonderfully huge big things have come your way. Abnormally huge. It wasn't just a small thing. They were big things. This word was given to those who belong to the elite, to the creme de la creme, as I think the French put it, the cream of the cream, the people who were um, just seemed to be chosen to be up there. Okay, these were the people who had it made. And they had God's approval because of their wealth. Wealth meant that God had smiled on you and had showered you with wealth. So if you had wealth, you were God approved. God had blessed you. You were enlarged economically because of God's approval on your life. It also meant that you had high political status, high religious status. Oh, that person is blessed. Look at how high he's gone up. And, uh, and so on, whether it was religious or political. <clears throat> And thus, it meant that that person had high social respectability. Okay? And therefore, a, a very good chance of inheriting eternal life. This is how Makarios in the entire Greek world was used. Now, in the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament, uh, oh, I know, the, cla the classical Greek. Did I skip the Septuagint? No, not quite. In the classical Greek, in uh, the uh, writings of uh, Plato and uh, other uh, the Greek poets, for instance, uh, Makarios was the state of the gods, because no one but the gods possessed ultimate power and ultimate wealth. They were the blessed. He was in, in a <clears throat> sort of inverse way, it was also the state of the dead. Because once you die, you join the gods. Of course, depending on the life you have lived, you join the gods, and so you also join their uh, wealth and their power. You belong to the gods. And that's why many Greeks named their children after Greek gods, so that the gods would recognize them in the afterlife. <clears throat> Okay. In the Septuagint, which is the translation of the Greek from the Hebrew of the Old Testament, uh, basically Makarios translates anywhere uh, where there is a description of a person that is living right. Okay, Blessed is the man from Psalm 1. That is Makarios. Uh, anyone that uh, has been keeping the Ten Commandments is considered to be Makarios. It's a, uh, the uh, people who have received the blessings given on Mount Gerizim. Mount Gerizim was the mount where Moses had commanded the people of Israel to go in the, as after they entered the Promised Land, and there they would pronounce blessings on the people of Israel. In the Wednesday class a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the blessings of Mount Gerizim. Blessed is your food basket. Blessed are, are your cattle. Uh, blessed is uh, the uh, womb um, of your uh, mothers. 
so on. Uh, these are all the blessings or the makarios uh, given. And the person had avoided the curses from Mount Ibal. Uh, so there are no curses given on Mount Ibal. Um, or, or the curses given on Mount Ibal did not apply to those who were considered makarios. OK, are you ready for a quiz? What is the meaning of makarios? Supreme happiness. OK. Uh, what about the first uh, part of it, mak? Huge. Huge. All right. Now, who followed Jesus? Okay, who followed Jesus? Now, here comes the scandalous part. If I can get to it. A great number of people I would like to think that Mary Magdalene was there. And who was Mary Magdalene? Sinner. <laughs> and then there are these Gentiles from Tyre and Sidon. And they had come to hear him and be healed of what? If they were sick, were they living in a state of Makarios? Sickness meant the opposite. That you had been cursed by God and that's why you were sick. Thus troubled by impure spirits. Everybody tried to touch him. Because power was coming from And so, he turns things upside down. And he looks, are all these people who are poor? Who are the blessed? According to the understanding of that time. The wealthy. The wealthy. The wealthy. But he looks at the poor and he says, Makarios. Upon you. For yours is the kingdom of God. And so there is the enlarged, huge blessing. The poor receive the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now. Who were those who were considered makarios? According to the thinking of the time. Heavy set. <laughs> <laughs> Their tables were just filled with wonderful things. And they had servants. And uh, food deliveries were constantly made to village. Their, their doors. But he says, to those who are so poor, that they are constantly hungry. He says, you are makarios, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now. Anybody who wept was either because they had lost somebody or um, had lost a relationship. Um, couldn't, found it very difficult to accept his or her personal circumstances, physically, emotionally, or otherwise. These are the people who weep in loneliness, okay. who are misunderstood by everyone, who would like to have a voice and explain themselves. 
<clears throat> a cat or they are hushed. So, blessed are you who weep now, for you will what? Laugh. You will laugh. Well, you laugh when you have a sense of being greatly blessed. Blessed are you when people hate you. Now, this is not social respectability. The blessing is given to those who have so little social respectability that they are hated. When they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as what? Evil. As evil. Because of the Son of Man. And he turns to himself and says, because of the Son of Man. He says, rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how the ancestors treated the prophets. Now, what do you find scandalous about this? The fact that it doesn't agree with the norms of the world. Like you say, it turned upside down. Well, and the social position of somebody that poor and that perhaps uneducated was it was natural you cast them out they were not welcome and yet he's saying here wait a second mm -hmm. you have a these, these are the great people yeah completely they, they opposed to the norm he turned they they were back in jerusalem in the temple, uh, having committee meetings in the Sanhedrin to see who had sinned and who had not sinned, um, seeing who would be promoted next. Um, that's where they were. But these folk are so desperate for a blessing that they come and touch him who is God's great blessing. And he receives their touch. And in touching him, they are blessed. And when Jesus says, blessed are you, he's not saying, look, in the future, you may or may not be blessed because we will have the accounting uh, or the heavenly accountant uh, tell us who are to be blessed and who are not to be blessed. But Jesus says at that moment, he says to them all, you are blessed. You are makarios. You are declared largely, greatly blessed. So much so that yours <coughs> is the kingdom of heaven. And so in order to make things even clearer, he goes to the woes. And I love this part because a war is, oh my, the stuff that's coming your way, that's, that's going to happen to you. I don't want to see it. She says, what?